Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to a special edition of the Nova Wrap. So today we are taking an interview with Stephen Hood. So Stephen is the creative director in charge of Dovetail's upcoming flight school and the future flight simulator from Dovetail Games. So uh, we're going to say welcome to and uh, welcome to the Nova Wrap, uh, Stephen. Thank you for having me on. I feel very privileged. Thanks very much. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. It's a privilege to have you on here as well, Stephen. Um, Stephen, so you know what? We're gonna we're gonna get started. There's been a lot of uh, sort of talk and a lot of rumor sort of going around. So first of all, you know, we're, we're gonna get started by sort of talking about say by clearing up today. We're gonna be talking about flight school. Um, mm -hmm. So I know there's a lot of you know a lot of people sort of you know talking about the upcoming flight sim, but we're gonna be focused on flight school because that's coming out very shortly. So you know what? I'm gonna give you this chance to sort of go through. Let's go through the uh, the quick sort of uh, give us the, the the quick spiel as it were to uh, to what uh, to what flight school is um, and uh, what it's going to be to the community. We'll do a quick spiel and we'll uh, we'll go from there. Well, flight school, if you like, is our our entry product into uh, the world of flight simulation. So this project comes from Dovetail Games and uh, is trying to capture something that I think is incredibly important, and that is to bring new people into the flight sim space. Um, since moving to Dovetail Games and starting to work on, on Flight Sim, it's become incredibly apparent how many people would love to get involved in this kind of space, but have found it um, overwhelming. You dropped into the cockpit, you don't really know what you're doing. And we wanted to launch a new Flight Sim, you know, turn a page, new chapter, um, generate something that was uh, accessible, but still authentic, still a simulator, and to really kick off the beginnings of a new franchise um, in the flight sim space. Cool. And, and, yeah, and it's, I find it very interesting that you mentioned there that um, you, you find that when, when people sort of uh, recently have been coming to, to flight simulation, they were sort of just, you know, dropped in the cockpit and sort of just expected to go on their way. And, mm. and I know from speaking to, to quite a few users out there and, and people that, uh, that I'm close to in my you know, personal professional circles that, you know, they, when I talk about flight simulator, they, they sort of go, oh, you know, yeah, I, oh, flight simulation. Yeah, I tried that. And I sort of, Pushed a, I pushed a, key, a couple of keys on a keyboard and it didn't seem to do anything. And I'm, I'm kind of mm. like, oh, you know, like, like, mm. oh, you know what? That seems so hard. And it's like, you know, for for yeah, those of us who've been doing it for a while, it seems so easy. But we, we forget yeah. a lot of people out there yeah. want to get into it, but sort of struggle with that. And, and I, yeah, I, I, that seems yeah. where you're going with it. It is, you know, and to make it very clear, we're not just trying to bring everybody into the space um, that would mean that we end up creating a video game for example and that's not what we're trying to do mm, mm. we're trying to keep it authentic trying to keep it a flight sim but at the same time appreciate that a lot of people that would love to get involved in this don't really know where to start you're talking about people just saying that they probably touched on flight simulator and maybe got the aircraft in the air um, and i'm sure you can appreciate they're not really getting to enjoy what flight sim <laughs> offers and you know, it's easy for us to overlook the fact that um, you know, aircraft and operating an aircraft and being a pilot mm. uh, is something that maybe you see on TV. It isn't something that you normally come across in your day-to-day -day life unless you have an interest in this particular area. You know, so few of us know where our lo local airfield is. Uh, you know your major airports because you go on holiday from them. But mm -hmm. where's the little kind of grass strip somewhere? And where's the, you know, the, the, the light GA aircraft taking off from? Where is that heading? People don't think about these things. And they certainly don't think about how to operate an aircraft. You put them in a cockpit and it, it looks entirely alien to them. It's not like driving a car where you understand the fundamentals. You put in an aircraft mm -hmm. and you probably know that the thing goes up and it goes down you probably don't know how to roll it you don't know how to trim it you don't know how to start it and you certainly don't know how to navigate and what's the radio for not to tune into your local station to just listen to some music this is a <laughs> communication device and th th all of these things kind of quickly yeah. pile up on top of a new user and what we're trying to do with flight school is break this up so that we can feed them this information at the very beginning in the first license type and make them feel as though Okay, I'm starting to get this now. It's it's starting to click in my mind. I want to know more, and they progress from the first license type, and then continue in flight school, go and get their PPL, and in the full flight sim in the future, progress. Let's say go through commercial, go through ATPL. So we've got to be appreciative of the fact that we're going to take people on the journey with flight school. And it's it's a it's the very beginning, but I think it's the right thing to do. 
And, and I just want to pick up because uh, you you made a fairly interesting point. Just sort of there, you mentioned that um, starting with with one license type and and, and going onwards from there, and um, that's something that you know. You, you associate with you know with a, you know whether it be a driving school where you're getting a driver's license uh, in this case a flight school where you're getting a, a, a you know a flight license or a pilot's license that we refer to. Yeah. So I, I want to talk a little bit now about the the licenses that we're talking about. Now you, you just mentioned that there's there's two licenses um, that yeah. we're going to see in flight school. Is that correct? Yes. So um, you're most certainly going to see uh, the European LAPL, as I call it, the Light Aircraft Pilot License, mm -hmm. which let's say, for example, in the US, that, that, that um, I'm sure a lot of people will be um, uh, tuning in from, will be uh, the LAPL is the introductory license type. So it's the equivalent of a recreational or sport license in the US that, mm. that almost flies under the radar for a lot of people outside of aviation. Mm. Everybody thinks you start with, for example, the PPL. That's yep. the, the stereotypical starting point. But the light aircraft pilot license in Europe is designed for um, – it gives you a limited license type. It limits the kind of endorsements and qualifications you can have on your license. But mm. we're using that as your introductory piece. So you can start there, and you'd start that in the UK, but there's a more advanced license type, the one that most people or more people will be aware of, which is your private pilot license in the US. And um, we've done that to use the LAPL as the entry point, should you want to you know, admit that you're starting with no knowledge whatsoever, and you just want to go through the basics of uh, appreciating how you take off, how you land, how you navigate from A to B, how you, you know, properly mm -hmm. turn the aircraft. Um, the things that I'm sure you and other kind of expert flight simmers out there would just gloss over immediately. It's, I know what I'm doing, just <laughs> let, let me at it. Um, but these new people coming in have to start mm -hmm. somewhere. We all did. And, yeah. and I want them to try and uh, engage with the flight simulator in a realistic manner. You turned up at a flight school and you admit that you know nothing, you're a student, give me my first license type. Whereas the PPL, uh, if you mm. transfer to the PPL, it doesn't ask you from the very beginning to try and take off and land. It doesn't ask you to show those skills. There's an assumption there to begin with. So what we're trying to do is capture elements of the typical syllabus in the LAPL and mm. the PPL. And the expert flight simmer will probably you know, engage with flight school and go straight to um, the American uh, uh, school and try and gain their PPL. You have to do the introductory lesson to welcome you to the school. Uh, mm. almost becoming a, a member or a club member mm. and then you could if you meet the solo flight time requirements just go and do your check ride um, and that that in my mind is important because uh, even though flight school is designed to capture the new user there are going to mm. be a lot of uh, expert flight simmers that have been in this space for a long time who will want to come in probably to try flight school out and they can gain their immediate license type and they can carry that profile with them and the hours that they log into the full flight simulator in the future. And that's where your hours and your experience starts to get used. And I'm trying to not do a Peter Molyneux and talk too much about that <laughs> one at the moment, but there, there is a plan for these things. Okay, well, well, actually, there's a couple of really interesting points that you, you raised there, and I'll, I'll come back to those in a second, but I want to go back to what you said before, Nate, you mentioned that, you know, we, so we've got the two license types that we see in flight school. And then you also mentioned that, um, you know, potentially we're going to see the, you mentioned, so, you know, the pilots who wish to in the future. And, and I know I said I'm focusing, you know, today's focused on, on um, flight school and not on flight simulator. But um, you also then sort of alluded to, you know, um, your ATP uh, qualifications, mm. you know, the things beyond PPLs. Uh, so is that something? And, and then just, just then you also mentioned that we're going to be looking at you can transfer the hours across into Flight Simulator once it comes mm. out. So um, it sounds like you, you've got a bit of a, a, a journey and, and, um, uh, and uh, sort of, you know, to expand flight school uh, into, an, into the future as well. Is that, is that what I'm sort of getting here? Yeah, you, I mean, you're absolutely right, and, and and for me, it's no secret. You know, I'm not I'm not trying to turn it into a game, but there is a logical kind of progression 
um, for a pilot, if you wanted to get into a particular line of work, let's say you wanted to become an airline pilot, then, mm. you know, if you're lucky enough, you might you might start at a school, an intermediate school that immediately kind of trains you on multi-engine aircraft or whatever. You've got to have a lot of money these days to kind of get onto that. <laughs> but there's some plenty of people out there that start with their, I'll try and get my uh, pilot's license, you know, mm. a private pilot's license, and then try and get a commercial license and, you know, get some jobs. Maybe I can do X, Y, Z and earn some money and then try and study for my um, airline transport pilot license. Um, and these things happen over time. And all we're trying to do with the um, Dovetail Games Flight Simulator franchise is to replicate those typical paths that you would have as a pilot in today's world. Mm. So, and, and it's a logical progression for me. So instead of us out the gate trying to say, you know, we've got 50 different aircraft types and we're just going to skim over all of them and you do one lesson and suddenly you're a qualified airline pilot and off you go. That, that, that seems a misstep in my mind. I want to try and concentrate on the experience and we deliver it when it's ready to go. So we don't just, for example, chuck airliners in flight school. That, that's mm. not what it's about. Mm. Those kind of larger aircraft and the complexities that go with them will come with associated training programs and recognition of your achievements, just like they would in real life. You know, it's... I, I want us to fill in some of the fantasy blanks that people are having to record in their minds at the moment um, and make more of this. And, that, and that's a, a really great way of putting it, I think. And, and actually, it's funny, as you, were, as you were sort of talking about that and sort of talking about that, that journey and sort of people, some people sort of saying that they want to go to the jets, whereas like, you know, there, there's more to flying than just pushing a couple of buttons. I, I'm reminded of, a, of uh, uh, the manual for the A2A uh, J3 Cub. Uh, there's a beautiful story in there um, relayed um, from Scott uh, of A2A of a of a airline pilot getting into a cub and realizing mm. that he'd forgotten how to fly. Yep. Yeah. And I, I really love that story. I think, um, you know, I've tried to immerse myself in this world. And for me, it's a logical point for us to begin. I mean, GA, starting in GA makes sense. Yeah, I've, I've read a lot of stories about pilots, you know, airline captains going back to fly GA at weekends or whatever, or whenever they get time mm. just to keep their hand in flying. But then there doesn't really in my mind need to be this massive distinction either between, you know, stick and rudder flying, pretending you're flying true aircraft. Um, <laughs> that's fine. That's valid. And we're mm. going to make the most of that. But then there is also the more complex side of aviation. And I think it's utterly compelling as well to set your business jet up or set your airliner up and then fly from A to B and do everything, you know, on the money and, and do it precisely. As long as there was some kind of recognition in there, it, I'm not talking about, you know, XP filling the screen going, well done, you've got 10,000 XP, now you're, I don't know, a level five pilot. It, it, <laughs> it doesn't need to be silly like that, you know, it's how to quickly ruin flight sim. Yeah, um, but there's a what I've tried to do is really understand the conversations that go in, on in the world of aviation mm. and do this appropriately. Now, you're always going to be able to, even in flight school, just go and enjoy um, free flight and do whatever you want. I'm not trying to stomp over the product. Mm. I'm just trying to make it more believable and add a subtle element of recognition in there that we could um, use and better appreciate in the future when we deliver, let's say, uh, additional missions or uh, community events or um, you know, maybe there's a pack in the future and you could fly for a particular airline and, mm. and gain recognition with Emirates or British Airways or whoever we might be able to sign deals with in the future and just do something that is probably quite cool, but mm. do it when the time is right and when we can, when we can really deliver an experience to go with it. Because as I was saying earlier, at the moment, I just think... There's a lot missing in flight sim, and everybody wants everything day one, as do I. I'm a creative guy. I'm a creative director on a project, and I'm, I'm always making demands as to what I'd like to see. But I also appreciate that I want to deliver something where people go, this is cool. I can see what they're trying to do. It's enjoyable. I want more of it rather than, well, they, they've given us all of this stuff, but it's not very good. It's all watered down. What's the point yeah. in that? Nobody will come back. Yeah, exactly. And... And, and I think that that's very much a, a huge element of um, 
of all simulators of all sim- or simulator uh, simulation players um, and people involved in the community is that you know we, we want to find more we want to, to to get more out of it we want to have new experiences and mm. to be able to find uh, a company that is, that is you know, and a developer and a creative like yourself who's actually doing that and actually sort of going okay well yeah, let's let's actually make something more than just you know yes we could just throw everything out there and it'll all just be a little bit wishy-washy but you know actually be able to take some time and go into it in a bit more depth that's uh, that, that's really exciting time for us it really is so uh, so that's great to hear um so you mentioned before as well that um, so you, you know, you can start with your LAPL, um, um, yep. or for any Australian viewers, your recreational pilot's license. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, you start with start with that, and then you can then you can have the option of moving on, or you can jump straight in, into a, a PPL. And you mentioned that so the PPL is going to be a US school, is that right? It's a US school, yes. Okay. It's, it's a US school, so it's a US training program, and the mm-hmm. terminology that goes with that is US based, because one of the things that I looked at very early on was Actually, the, the the world of aviation and pilots that operate around the world, mm. um, it, it can still be massively confusing for people that have been in that space forever or who are licensed pilots or who are commercial pilots because you only need to read various kind of threads on, on um, pilot forums to understand that if a guy wants to, to move from Australia to the US or to the UK and, and work there, He's unsure as to what do I need? What what qualifications do I need? Can I transfer my license? Is it the equivalent of this? Mm-hmm. And it's it's you know different regions, different territories have got their own kind of rules and regulations, terminology, and all sorts, which is really fascinating. But from a development point of view, a real nightmare because it's different. <laughs> um, but what I don't want to do is just copy uh, the Microsoft franchise and say, mm-hmm. okay, what we want, what we're going to do is everywhere across the world is US. And the terminology mm. in America and everywhere, because I want to try and enable people to enjoy this simulator and recognize that if they jumped onto Google or went to the local flight school, that we appreciate the different terminology and regions around the world. Mm. Now, that doesn't all come in flight school, um, but it will over time. So we're setting a bunch of stuff up. For example, the uh, the air traffic control system, instead of that just mm. being human voices that have been recorded, mm. we've got a, a kind of text-to-speech system, um, a really good one, actually. The first time I've heard something, I've gone, that's half decent, <laughs> uh, <laughs> because they've always been really, really poor in the past. Mm. But yes. it's important for us to, to invest in this technology because I want to capture the different terminology around the world. So if, you, if we've got the whole world to play with, this, this whole kind of map, what's the point in just pretending that it's um, one terminology and one set of rules everywhere that that loses the richness that exists in the real world so if you were doing a, a flight for example in a light aircraft and you were traveling from a to b or you know taking it from the us over to europe or over to wick in scotland mm. um that there are differences as you travel across the world that that don't really exist in fsx and other simulators and that seems you know, it's, it's a subtle thing, but all of these things added together, I think, will create a richer, deeper experience of being a pilot in today's world, traveling around this huge world map, which is one of the pluses of us beginning with FSX to, to harness that. Mm. For me, it's really, really important. It, it's interesting that, that you mentioned that sort of long journey because I know that um, from personal experience, my my uh, my father was a, a pilot for um, for th- almost almost forty years, and uh, and he spent uh, many many of his uh, early years um, he actually spent as a ferry pilot, and it's actually a quite a, a common way that um, pilots were sort of when they first you know, if they want to get build up their multi engine command and stuff like that, they they'll ferry aircraft all around the world, so they get an, an experience of that changing terminology and rules they fly around the world so is that is that something that so we are are we going to experience something like that in flight school uh well i can't give loads of stuff away but the fact that um you know you mentioned ferry pilots it's something that that kind of world or or the things that you could do as a pilot that have interested Mm. me so you know, there's all sorts of things that go on in the real world. You being a ferry pilot, air taxi, crop spraying, all sorts of bits and pieces. Mm. But what I want to try and do is, is focus on particular experiences that, 
you know, a lot of people probably don't appreciate it outside the aviation circles. Mm. And if we have this whole world, if we've got a cool weather system, if we've got differences in terminology, um, and there's just an exciting place to explore, doing stuff like, you know, in light aircraft, the challenge of, of doing a, a ferry pilot mission, if you will, or being a ferry pilot in the real world is really demanding and mm. challenging. But I also think incredibly exciting. And it's that kind of experience that I would like to transmit into what we're doing with the flight simulation franchise because it takes advantage of all the technology that is on offer in the simulator and probably shows it off in a really good light. Well, that's that's definitely sounding really exciting, that is. So uh, I'll definitely be uh, looking for those experiences coming up. Um, well, okay, so I want to get... Um, I want to move it into a little bit more about um, the, the team and so, the, 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 yourself and your team and, and some maybe some of the, the challenges and some of the successes that you've had. Um, a lot's been bandied about um, since the first announcement back in um, the first announcement back in 2014 that, that Dovetail was sort of you know getting the license from Microsoft to be able to develop um, to, to use the technology and then mm. that proceeded into a, a very sort of ugly argument about flight and FSX and you know we'll, we'll you know put that one to one side. Um, I, I, there's been a lot of confusion and a lot of discussion um, and a lot of heated debate about no, what it is. No, you're joking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I've seen it. I've seen oh, it. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Any, it, there, there's a reason why. Uh, anyway, I'm, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> uh, listen, a lot of passion debate and a lot of sort of you know heated discussion about what's you know what is you know what is flight school what is flight simulator the, the engine it's going to be so mm. you know there's those that sort of say you know it should be the ground up there are those who say why not just take flight there are those who say well you've got fsx and you've got that um you know and then of course you've got you know competitors in the market also using elements of you know technology but you know we've got lockheed martin's repair 3d um also essentially using an upgraded fsx engine what are some of the challenges and successes that that you as a creative director and, and you you and your team have faced in taking what is essentially to be honest an almost 20 year old platform and trying to you know and then trying to bring it into, you know, dragging it, kicking and screaming into the modern modern age and modern technology. What are some of the challenges and what are some of the successes that you've faced and had with doing that? So, it's, yeah, I've seen these discussions floating around the internet <laughs> and I've seen the people uh, with a lot of theories. And I, I don't ever think the answer is black and white between mm. right and wrong. Um, the, the practical realities of development or you know, any software development means that you've got a finite um, amount of resource and time mm. and you've got to do something great with it. Yeah. So you know, you'll get some people out there, I mean, I've, I've seen it on every project that I, I've worked on where people say, God, that, you know, such and such, yeah. they're a huge company, why aren't they spending $1 billion and hiring everybody in the world in order to make the greatest <laughs> whatever? And, and uh, I would love to do that. Yep, but, yep. you know, not often do I get somebody coming along to me and saying, here's a billion dollars, do whatever you want with it, make the greatest thing. Maybe one day that will happen. But the practical reality of modern life is you have time and you've got a, you've got a team. Yep. And what you try and do is assemble the best possible team for the job that you've got. Yep. And I think we have got a great team. And, you know, as we were talking about earlier, we do... Um, try and plug in expertise and resource from around the world so it's not just the core dovetail team operating in the UK there are people all over the world uh, in in different disciplines like data guys that are supplying a bunch of data you know, aviation data terrain data to improve the world to make the simulator accurate you know that there's a huge investment in that and there's a huge investment in expertise wrapping people in that were part of the original ACES development team who you know, to be perfectly honest, have got a, a point to prove again because they're disappointed with how the franchise will have gone mm. and they just want to make a really great flight simulator. They live and breathe this stuff. Yep. So, you know, 
teaming up with those kind of guys, it gives us the best of both worlds. We've got the experience. Yes, they're working remotely, but that's great as well because I want this to be an international flight simulator. Mm. It's not just about, you know, Dovetail Games in England just trying to make a flight simulator and, and turning the world into, you know, European rules and regulations. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah. We've got to plug this experience in. And then when it comes to the technology, mm. you know, um, modern software projects are, are written, you know, in an mostly in an intelligent manner so there are different modules that can be replaced over time. Mm -hmm. So when we looked at what was available in FSX, um, you know, I liked what they were trying to do. They had the whole world map, you know, they've got the radio comms and that proper navigation and AI traffic. Uh, and they had these systems that were in my mind important if we were going to convey what it meant to be a pilot. It doesn't matter if you were a pilot 20 years ago or a pilot now. A lot of those systems are valid. They can be improved upon, undoubtedly, but it was a better platform for us to begin there and then use our expertise to either update those systems with teams that we have got around the world or, in some cases, you know, completely rip things out and introduce new modules. So the renderer is vastly upgraded. The inherent technology in the system, we've moved it from being 32-bit to 64-bit yeah. It will now be DX11. It can use um, uh, PBR and HDR systems in order mm. to convey a much more realistic sense of what it's like to fly an aircraft, you know, in relation to the sunlight, the way it, it reflects on the aircraft, on the exterior and the interior, the light that you'll see on the runways. All of these things are incredibly, incredibly important. You know, light scattering, for example, as soon as you get that in, Suddenly you're flying towards the horizon and then there's just a hue of the different colours from the, the sun and the sky that just reflect across the terrain. And that, that's really important. And I think we showed that off some, some recent screenshots that we grabbed at that point in time and everybody said, it looks like Dovetail Flight Sim is going to be um, you know, blue hue everywhere. <laughs> yeah, And that's fine. Until we release more screenshots, everybody's going to think that maybe. But we'll I, I, see. I think, more uh, stuff I think, is coming out. I think there was a chorus of, uh, of a lot of people thinking about that uh, blue Dabba D song back from the 90s I think when those <laughs> screenshots came out I think yeah. everyone was concerned it was going I, to I, I, but, but it's the same on everything because you know the community is really interested in what we're doing for obvious reason mm. we're taking something and, and trying to turn a new page and they're going to have a laser focus on everything that we do yes. and I, I am very comfortable with that because I think um, as we release Flight School that will give people the, which is imminent you know it's going to be an end of next month Mm. Um, people will get an impression of what we're trying to do with flight simulation and what I do hope is that they will appreciate that it, it is in safe hands and that we do care about it you know you're right now you're talking to a developer I'm on the project mm. I'm, I'm not trying to give you the PR spin I know that the best way um, for us to be successful is to create something that we will all enjoy yeah. and I feel very privileged to be in this position to create a project that I have always wanted to be involved in um, mm -hmm. and it's up to us to deliver. And, and that's uh, and that's great to hear the, the fact that you are happy to be to be open about that and and it, it is sort of as it, it's, I'm glad to hear that you know it's not just about you know repackaging a, a 15 20 year old engine it is about you know looking at modularizing it and looking at you know what's good what can be improved on so that, that that's great to hear and and it's all, of course um, uh, great for the future, and and, and as you as you said, you, it, one of the things that I've noticed pop up in a, in a couple of your other comments and, and commentaries around um, your work is that it's about uh, turning a new page in flight simulation and and about you know starting a journey again. And and I mm. I, 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 I I for one am really excited about uh, the future of this because it does look like um, you know you're, you're you're definitely working towards something new. Um, because I, I want to go, go back to actually to something in, in earlier in your career, actually, because um, I know oh, that skeletons uh, in the cupboard. Now. Ske ske yeah. Skeletons in the cupboard now. Yeah. Um, because I, I know <laughs> that um, your your big big sort of you know your bigger project uh, or biggest project prior to coming to uh, to dovetail for to working on flight school and flight sim uh, was of course uh, F one. Um, and uh, I'm, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I didn't play it much. I, I didn't play it a lot, but I was very interested to sort of hear and, and, and experience the fact that you really wanted to capture that simulation aspect of it. Mm. Um, so is, and, and of course earlier you mentioned that, you know, flight simulation has fascinated you. So is simulation sort of de definitely part of, you know, adding that realism is something that, you know, you've been able to bring across or your passion for that is something that you've brought across from F1? Okay, my background 
is, um, you know, tr I've always tried to create authentic representations of uh, an experience. So obviously Formula One is a very big project that I've been involved in a couple of times, luckily mm -hmm. enough to be involved in a couple of times at Sony uh, many, many years ago, and then more recently in the last few years at Codemasters. Um, and I, it's not me that really tries to bring simulation to the fore because you know, it's, it's not just one individual. It's got to, it's got to be something that um, is a passion amongst the team. You know, I'm just one guy in a huge operation. Mm -hmm. I had happened to try and steer that operation in terms of uh, outlining the kind of content and the experience that we're trying to chase. And, you know, I'm there to solve problems. Or I'm sure I create a free view as well with some of my demands, but um, you know there was a huge, really talented team, a really good bunch of core programmers and artists. Um, there's a great producer on the team as well, and a whole network of people around them to try and support this this project. But I've always tried to uh, gain an appreciation of the subject matter. So if it was in Formula One, for example, um, <clears throat> you know there's a there's this typical rule book for the sport if you like is no different to like a football game or whatever mm -hmm. um, and you can replicate those things in, in black and white but if you don't understand the reasoning behind things or the emotive response that you get from being a driver who is you know sitting in the garage before going out to do his final qualifying run mm -hmm. or knowing that um, his teammate that operates alongside him has got the edge on him, is making him look bad because nine times out of ten is the same machinery. That's what I cared about. It was like trying to understand the what goes through the driver's mind and trying to replicate that. Mm -hmm. Now, back on Formula One, when I when I started on the, the the most recent franchise, I was saying, you know, it would be cool. You know, they had a bunch of artwork and it was like a car in a garage and stuff. And I said that's really important because. Um, Sitting in the garage watching the times coming is part of of the excitement. Yeah, and you can imagine uh, people in a in a marketing team going, sitting in a garage watching a screen of times <laughs> coming. That's aren't you meant to be on the track driving? It's like you you will do, but you need to make that special. Mm. Um, and that that's how we did it. So when it comes to flight simulation, mm. um, for me, I think a lot of the flight simulators that that have come out previously, and certainly ones that are around now. Do a pretty good job of replicating um, uh, the concept of an aircraft flying um, in laboratory conditions. And what I want to try and bring into that is, well, as a pilot, what do you need to do? Because a lot of the systems in, let's say, uh, flight sims now, you have to trigger yourself. So when we're talking about filling in those fantasy blanks, if um, a new user can come into flight school, um, they can do whatever they want in free flights, but I want to get to the point where you are recognised for flying appropriately. So at the moment, if you did a long flight in, a, in a, let's say, the supercar, and you went on a little adventure um, from one little remote airport to another, mm. and you did that flight and you felt like a hero, you got there, you got the fuel right, you navigated properly, um, you landed in one piece, you parked the aircraft up. At the moment, all you end up doing is going, hey, who saw that? Nobody. The, yep. There just needs yep. to be recognition of that, and it adds subtly to it, because you get pilots in the real world that are talking about, well, I've got you know, mm. X number of hours, I've got an instrument rating, you know, all these kind of endorsements and qualifications that they can have on their licenses, and that stuff is cool. That's that's mm. their recognition, yeah. and I want to capture the same thing. So mm. I try to bring the understanding to it. We tried to do it with other projects that I've worked on. You know, I've done Formula One, but I've done other stuff as well. Um, you know, right back to most recently in the news, Lionhead are closing down. And I was at Lionhead for a while, mm. and I worked on a project called The Movies, which is a bit like The Sims, and you run a movie studio, and you could edit stuff and create movies yourself. And I worked on the the movie editor, and I cared about the tools for, for creating the movies. Um, and those were really interesting times, very different companies, and I tried to take those experiences into always trying to improve. Mm. And let's be honest, I think it's time that somebody or team came into flight simulation and tried to move things forward um, at a faster rate than they are currently able to, you know, appreciate and yeah. with P3D and, you know, all sorts of projects that are out there doing a good job, but yeah. there's and more, isn't there? There's more to come. The, yeah, and I, and I think it's a, it's a lot about that immersion. And I, I think for the, that sort of seems to be where, where that's going with that is the, the whole immersion of the experience of the fact that, 
Um, you know, yes, you can fly, you know, anything. And, and let's face it, with with, with FSX uh, Steam Edition, there are literally thousands of aircraft that you yeah. can plug into it. And, you know, you can fly any of them. You can do all sorts of stuff with them. Um, but where's the immersion? And mm. and that immersion is something that's very quite rare, I find, um, in in what you say and, and and I hadn't really thought of it before sort of uh, like in that way before but you mentioned that that sort of laboratory style flying and 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 you're kind of right it, it very much is like that um for a lot of the um the the product out there at the moment and but you you sort of have that disconnection away from you know what's the immersion and you know who saw you know so who saw that and where where's the yeah immersion in the in the scenario because there's there's more to flying than just you know taking an airplane from point a to point b and um I, I know from from my times uh, up in uh, up in the air myself in the, in the real world is that yeah it's it's that that perspective is different and the fact that you know you've got to go through all those charts and logs before you go mm. there's there's a lot more to it than just pretty, pr- pushing mm. a couple of buttons so so yeah, I, but that's but that's but that makes it fascinating doesn't it mm. that that's the real yeah. love and depth of of that it's like I want people to ultimately like I, my plan is to try and bring more of the right kind of people into the space mm. and then they will feel compelled when they're at school or work or college or whatever and they'll be thinking I need to plan that flight if I just you know do, do some planning now mm. I can think about that and I'll go home and, and do that flight that's it that would be great and, and we need more of that I think yes. because uh, there's so many more people out there that we can bring in to appreciate this mm. but at the same time you know flight school is is providing the foundations for the, the simulator and the engine, the technology that um, the really hardcore and experienced flight simmers will appreciate over time. This is the first step on that journey. And and you know what I I think that's a it's a really great way to put it is that it, it is about a journey it is about a first step and and you know what it's the the passion that you talk about with this is, is great to see and the passion that you bring that uh, to Dovetail Games Flight School uh, and from that eventually into uh, to Flight Simulator in the future is just sounds absolutely fantastic so you know what, I think it's probably going to be a, a great time a great place to wrap this up so uh, Stephen I want to say thank you very much for joining uh, me here on this special edition of the Nova Wrap today. More than happy to. I've, I've enjoyed that. You've given me a great distraction from uh, my day-to-day job, but I always love talking about this, so thank you for your time. I'm glad that you, you've had me on the show, so to speak. No worries. Well, as I said, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute privilege to have you on the show. All right, folks, so that wraps up this special edition of the Nova Wrap today. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget, as always, to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying these uh, and want to see more. And, of course, uh, for more information about Dovetail Games Flight School, uh, I will be putting some links in there to the Facebook page and to the official website. So don't forget that is coming out very, very soon. So we uh, hope to see it on our digital, uh, digital shelf stores in a few weeks' time. All right, thanks very much once again, Stephen. Take care, stay close to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.